True Crime with Shane, where truth meets speculation, investigating crime from the past and the present. If you love true crime the way that I love true crime, then what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe as well as that notification button. That way you'll be notified every time I drop a new video. Thanks in advance, guys. Now let's get to some true crime. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you all comment, hit that like button, and let's talk about what's going on currently, which is not a lot. There's not been any real bombshells lately, but what I have been doing is just going back over all of the details and old interviews and posts and pictures and things like that. And that's pretty much what I will be doing until October or unless there is a major um, announcement or breakthrough in the case. Now, there's been a couple of things that has always, always stayed in my mind in regards to this case. And we will be discussing them in this video. One of the things that I was very um, concerned about was the way that each victim's um, wounds were described. And so we're going to discuss that. We're going to also discuss who died where. Um, and everything in this video is my opinion is simply speculation. That being said, I wanted to go ahead and address the post that Zana Kernodal made. Back in August 2022, she was selling a bed. Actually, there was two thin foam mattresses, I believe, and a box spring. And I do think, if I'm correct, I saw a desk in one of the posts. I couldn't go back and find that TikTok, but I do believe that there was a white desk as well. Now, one thing that I want to say is I believe that Xana Kernodal originally had the room on the first floor months prior to the killings. And the reason I say this is because if you look at the pictures, you're going to see that there are Number one, red or pink or whatever. I think those curtains are red. I think it's just the lighting. And that is on the bottom floor. This is Anna Kernodal's Facebook post. This is her marketplace post where she was selling a bed. Now, I did read someplace that she was selling the bed or posting this for Kaylee, but Regardless, this is not in Kaylee's room. This is on the bottom floor. How do I know this? Well, because if you can remember when the police were called to the home at 1122 King Road in regards to the noise complaint and Xana Cronodo came outside, the curtains, they were still in the downstairs room. Also, the downstairs room is the only room that has a different pattern in regards to the way that the wood planks are laid on the floor. They all go up and down in the same direction as the door. Every other room is going kind of the opposite way. I'm going to take a moment and I'm just going to kind of show you guys what I'm talking about. We're going to go through each one of the rooms really quick so you'll have a better understanding. Just in case you don't. And just so we're clear, we're starting from the downstairs room. This is the downstairs room. This is the upstairs room where she relocated to. This is Maddie Mogan's room. Kaylee Gonzalez's room. Dylan Mortensen's room. Bethany Funk's room. Now, originally, I did say that there was only one room with this pattern of wood planks. Bethany Funk's room also has the same pattern with the wood planks. However, 
we know that her room was on the other side of the house it was much larger and it did have an area where the upstairs the actual stairs was kind of protruding through the ceiling so i'm confident in saying that this room is the downstairs room that we all knew to be empty that was a catch-all room and we do know that there was some golf clubs being stored down there don't forget that because it's going to be very important a little bit later down the line now the reason that i believe zanna moved upstairs was because this downstairs room was pretty small and if you looked at the facebook marketplace ad she had a full-size bed I believe that once she started dating Ethan, she, I mean, Ethan was a kind of tall, big guy. I can't see the two of them, you know, just laying up in a full-size bed. So I do believe that that was the reason that Xana decided to sell that full-size bed and move upstairs to a little bit bigger room with a bigger bed. Now, how do I know that Xana moved upstairs? Because that same picture that you can see on the wall, it's kind of a um, a printed sketched picture. You can see Kaylee posing with some friends in front of that picture. Behind those girls is a bed. And it is against the window. Okay? And you're able to see that same um, printed sketched tapestry Xana liked tapestries on her window you'll see her also sitting again with a different I think it's Travis Scott tapestry over that same window one more quick look at Kaylee and friends in the upstairs second floor room of Xana Cronodo notice the ceiling how it's slanted at one angle then you'll take a look at the outside. You can see where the slant is. The slant is on that left-hand side, Xana Cornodal's room. And why is this important? This is important because if that bed was pushed against that window, then that means that someone bled out horribly from that back exterior wall. And I believe that to be Ethan Chapin. I believe that the probable cause said that Xana could be seen from the hallway. So that only leaves Ethan to be against that wall. Why am I saying this? Because as I was looking at, and I must warn you guys, these pictures that I'm about to show may be a little bit um, triggering. I don't know if you guys have seen these pictures pics or anything but there's quite a bit of blood on one of the mattresses but the mattress that the blood is on I believe that was the mattress of Maddie Mogan's because it's smaller it's not a twin size but I can imagine that in the eyes of a grown man um, an adult it may have seemed like a single bed or maybe he just meant one singular bed that the young ladies were found in together. So let's take a look. So here we see that they are removing the mattresses. Now, if you measure the mattress as opposed to the female officer, I mean, it's pretty tiny. So I do believe that this is the bed that was in Madison Mogan's room. Because if you look here at Madison Mogan's room, it is really small. She doesn't really have enough room in there for too much. So it looks like a full bed would be in that room, which is exactly what they are carrying out. And then she has a desk in there. So that seems like all that could pretty much fit in that room. We've seen it empty and we've seen it furnished and it is pretty small. And as you can see here, this mattress is soiled with blood stains consistent with two people laying there after they have been murdered. Just horrible. It makes me sick to my stomach every time I think of what happened to those poor kids on that night or that early morning of November 13th, 2022. Here you'll see that they are bringing out and loading 
a larger size mattress, which I do believe that to be of Xana Cronodo. I am assuming that that is blood beneath the, um, the guy's hands near the light of the truck. I don't believe that there was as much blood found on this mattress because I do believe, again, that the probable cause stated that Xana Cronodo was on the floor and that she could be seen from the hallway. I believe that Ethan Chafin was on the opposite side of the room from the window, the opposite side, where we all have seen that blood gushing down the exterior wall of that house. Speaking of Ethan Chapin, Ethan Chapin's wounds were described very different from everyone else's. Now, Xana's was described different as well. Maddie, Maddie and Kaylee, excuse me, Maddie and Kaylee's were described pretty much the same. But Ethan Chapin was deceased with wounds later determined to be caused by sharp forced injuries. This is why I brought up the golf clubs in the beginning. Because if you remember early on, Stacy Chapin, even Ethan Chapin's mother gave a statement and here's what she had to say. For an update, anything we slash Ethan had is now frozen with the defense. For us, it involves two vehicles, Ethan's belongings, and a nice set of golf clubs. Golf clubs. So when I Google, can golf clubs be used as a weapon, this is what I found. Pretty interesting. Now that you guys have had a chance to read that, what do you think? Make sure you leave comments below and let's get the conversation going. I mean, I think this is... um. This is possible. And they did take the golf clubs for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> Could just be because it, they were there. I don't know, but I found it very interesting. Also, I have included some additional pictures um, in regards to the other victims that were found there. Xander Cronoda was deceased with wounds which appeared to have been caused by an edged weapon. That's how Xana's injuries were described, which leads me to believe that she had incised, incised wounds, which are more like slashes and cuts. I believe Xana Cornodal's neck was cut, unfortunately. I do believe that Kathy and Maddie were both stabbed, um, just generally stabbed. Maddie most likely was asleep. She was pretty inebriated, so I think she was just out of it and according to Steve Gonsalves um, you know he did say that they were both killed in the same manner but it was very different I think that maybe Matt because Kaylee was awake and coming out of her room allegedly I think that she was fighting and I think that maybe he was fighting and punching and beating her stabbing at the same time I'm not sure I know that that's a very small room up there where Maddie and Kaylee were found and it's right above Dylan Mortensen's room. So you didn't hear that. Also, if Brian Kohlberger entered in the back through the sliding door, Dylan's room window is right there. So when he came and when he left, if that's what happened, allegedly, you didn't see or hear anything. You didn't hear the car speed off because it's stated in the probable cause that the car sped off. So... I mean, it's obvious that there was some rumbling and bumbling upstairs. I mean, you can look at this document, and according to the document dump, it says that there was blood stains, spatter, a significant amount of blood up there. Here is blood on one of the victim's desks. I do believe it to be Xana Cornodos, because if I'm correct, I saw this desk for sale. Um in a Facebook marketplace post, I believe, okay? Um, don't hold me to it, but I believe. And then you see the female officer bringing out something in a bag that is clearly 
soiled with blood. It looks to be either a comforter, a blanket, or a pillow or something like that, but it has a lot of blood on it. They tried to cover it up, but um, it wasn't working. So you guys, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and um, I thank you again. We will talk soon.